Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd, as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. Today is the everything you need to know on how to read crochet patterns. Teaching how to read crochet patterns is one of the hardest elements of my job here at the Crochet Crowd. The goal is to teach you today on how to generically read patterns so that you can start your journey to continuing to build your skill sets. Once you have learned one pattern, you then move on to the next and over time, you may not even realize that you're reading patterns with ease. Just for the record, most of our crochet tutorials show you how to read a pattern and I just crochet my way along through it so that you can just follow along. The goal today is to give you the keys of the kingdom so that you can get an overview on how to read patterns on your own. So today is a comprehensive video on learning how to read crochet patterns. I have broken down this video into segments. On screen now are the menu options with minute markers. Feel free to fast forward ahead if you'd like to see something that you're more interested in. On screen now are Know how you learn, abbreviation keys, abbreviation substitution, abbreviation punctuation and plurals, abbreviation contractions, defined abbreviations and patterns, color coding with the alphabet, sizing difference used in brackets, repeats used in a pattern, defined hook sizes, pattern gauge, instruction versus referral locations, fastening or breaking off, and behind the scenes of pattern writing. So let's begin knowing how you learn. Though I've been crocheting since I was 14, I could only read crochet diagrams but not understand the written instructions. I'm not a strong reader which makes it a bit harder for me and it wasn't until I was in my late 30s that I forced myself to try to read crochet patterns. It took me about a year to become comfortable due to the fear of getting things wrong. But the advantage with crochet is that you can always pull out and retry. The fear is unfounded, I guess in retrospect. So if I were to describe pattern reading, it's all about simplicity. I'm not saying it's simple to read patterns, but the pattern is written in simple format with many abbreviations. To put it mildly, the pattern cuts out the fluffy writing and then puts it in direct and to the point to absolute precision on what needs to be done. In many ways, some instructions require you to know what you are doing in advance. For example, fastening off and weaving in the ends. If you don't know how to do that, here on YouTube there are many great tutorials on simplistic steps such as this. Once you get it, you get it. So by looking things up that you don't understand, you're in turn building up your mind with new knowledge and that will come in handy in the patterns in the future. So for me, I learned to read crochet patterns through practical application, meaning I just didn't pick up a pattern and say that I could read it. I decided a project and then followed through with the pattern at my side. Like a child, I was learning to read slowly and sounding things out. I would read out loud and digest what was being asked of me and then I would do it with my project. Don't be scared to highlight or mark up any of this pattern or use your own notes because I do it all the time, even today. So here's the thing. The reality is, is if you think you're gonna pick up a pattern today and learn to read it and then be an expert on pattern reading by tomorrow, you got to pull your heads out of the clouds my friends. Be realistic about your learning process. Take each process step by step and slowly and you will hit the finishing lines quicker than people who rush through the process and get frustrated with themselves. It's not that hard. You just have to take step by step. So let's move on now to the abbreviation key. So here's the abbreviation key and in most reputable patterns there are abbreviation keys provided. They are the abbreviations that will be used in the pattern. It's typical practice not to put any abbreviations in the key that are not used in this particular pattern. This helps simplify your process and not showing you things that you don't need to know. In rarely used abbreviations the designers will either have it here or have it written or spelled out in the pattern itself so that you can use and I'll show you an example of this later. Yarn Inspirations has also provided a web URL for standards of typical abbreviations they use. Anything that's kind of standard is in their list. Anything that's special will be noted here on the pattern. So let's move along to talking about reading and substituting the words in your head. The more you use the abbreviations, the more that your mind will substitute the abbreviations using real words in your mind. For example, let's review this. CH3 counts as DC, 1 DC and each ST across turn. My mind doesn't say it like that. My mind says, let's chain 3 counts as a double crochet, 1 double crochet in each stitch across. So your mind will substitute with just practice on being able to take the substitution words and then applying the real words of what they mean. So in the abbreviation substitution CH means chain, DC meant double crochet and ST is short for stitch. So while in this example it doesn't look like many extra words but when you look at a pattern from a distance the pattern can be extremely long if all the words are used instead of abbreviations. The more that you use these abbreviations the more your mind will substitute the abbreviations for real words. You just gotta practice and keep on trying until it starts to stick in your mind. 
So let's move along to abbreviation, punctuation and plurals. So notice that the abbreviation is first and then it's followed by the long form of what it is. For example, PAT equals pattern. So you can just say pat if you prefer and then when you read that in the instructions, pat will always equal pattern. So whenever you see it, your mind should say pattern. You will notice that each of the abbreviation in the keys have an uppercase first letter. That's only because it's here in the abbreviation key as followed by proper punctuation. So if the abbreviation is the start of a new sentence, the first letter will be capitalized. If the abbreviation is midway through a sentence, it will be lowercase. The meaning is still the same regardless of the upper or lowercase letters used. There is no physical difference between what is uppercase or lowercase on what you should be doing as a crochet stitch itself. You will notice that some abbreviations have meanings with brackets such as LY, S, ING. This means that the abbreviation when reading it could have those added letters in your mind. Only abbreviations such as round with the S added to it can actually appear in the pattern as round or as rounds. One double crochet in each of the next three chain. In the abbreviations it has an S in the meaning for chain. So in your mind you will say each of the next three chains but the S does not appear as the S in the meaning. As far as this is concerned, this is technically not an abbreviation to be used. So you will never see CHS short for chains. It will always be CH for chain and if it's a plural, your mind will say chains but it will not be written as chains because it's not a standard of crochet. So in the abbreviations key we can see rounds and the uh, has the bracket S after the word rounds and you can see that it can be used in the pattern. So it can either be a single of round or it can be a plural of round. So it can be used either way and so you will have an example. For example, repeat the last round. Okay, there's no S there or repeat the last two rounds with an S. Either is correct and is in the standard of crochet. Both are correct and the abbreviation key will show you that being there so the S can actually be added. So let's move along to abbreviation contractions where two meanings have to come together to form one meaning. The Cable Work Afghan is a great example of an abbreviation key that has all of the instructions on how to do the stitch. You will notice double crochet front post and treble crochet uh, front post are used in the abbreviation. If you haven't noticed, this abbreviation of the two abbreviations are sandwiched together as one. They are contracted together and work together in unison. So think about your name. Most of us have a first and a last name. Definitely they define us. I am Michael Selleck. Together it states who I am. If I use Michael, I can be any Michael on planet earth and if I just use my last name, I could be anybody. But together they make me. So some crochet terms need to work together to define what it is in order to be specific. So we know DC is short for double crochet and we know TR is short for treble crochet and if you're unsure you can look at the abbreviation key and see that above. Now what you don't see is the FP and that is short for front post. Though there is no separate term in the abbreviation for FP, this particular abbreviation never sits on its own as an instruction in the pattern. It's a contraction of a word that needs something else to complete its instruction. For example, you will never see front post in the next three stitches. Front post is where the hook is going but there is no crochet stitch assigned on the action on how you are to move your hook. You know that it's going in the front post but what stitch will you actually use? So it's missing something. So it could be a front post double crochet, front post half double crochet, front post treble and etc. So some abbreviations like front post, back post, front loop, back loop, they need other sets of instructions to follow it through so you know what to do with your hook. So for example, let's correct this instruction. A stitch must be implied in front of the abbreviation. So let's just put a DC, so double crochet front post in the next three stitches so that you know that you're doing a double crochet and you know you're gonna apply it to the front post of the next three. So it's now correct. So usually when this happens, the abbreviations are sandwiched together as one. In some patterns, you can see them separate as well such as DCFP with a space in between but that's not the standard for technical terms but you may see that around on the net. So let's also take a look when you need to decrease stitches when you're doing stitches together known as TOG which is short for together. So TOG meaning together cannot be used on its own. So you not only have to assign the stitch but you have to tell how many stitches are gonna be putting together. So here's an example. Double crochet two together, treble crochet four together, half double crochet five together. The stitch is assigned so you know what exactly you're doing and then the number of stitches that will be put together is the next section. Essentially you are eliminating stitches by pulling the stitches together. 
So let's move along to defining the abbreviations in a pattern if it's missing from the abbreviations key. Sometimes the abbreviation meaning is completely missing from the abbreviation key. It's still in the pattern but it's in the pattern itself and you have to get to it and so you will notice it the very first time that you're ever going to use it. So let's take an example and show you this. Sometimes the abbreviation is completely missing from the abbreviation key. So it's still in the pattern but it's in the pattern itself and you will not get to it until you're actually reading through the pattern. So let's take an example of the following. Chain one, skip next stitch, five double crochet in the next stitch, slash shell in the next stitch. So what we've now learned is that the word shell with the slash means that five double crochets in the next stitch equals a shell. So the next time that we run into this in the neck, in the pattern below, whenever it uses the word shell, we know that it's gonna be five double crochets in, in the next stitch. So let's take a closer look. So essentially what they've done is that they defined the word shell as to equal five double crochets into the next stitch. It does not equal everything, it only equals to what's directly in front of it and so that was five double crochets in the next stitch. So instead of writing five double crochets in the next stitch over and over and over every time it's used, when they use the word shell, that's exactly what you need to look for. So just look above in the pattern where you've already passed it and that will give you the meaning every time that you see that word. So there are other forms of the V-stitch. So think of the letter V and then think about chains that would rest in between the top of the V section. So V-stitches and shells and sprays can be different depending on the designer. So V-stitches, shells and sprays have no actual definition and it's always defined in the pattern itself. So don't assume that they're always the same because there are no standards of what V-stitches should be. So for example, V-stitch could be single crochet, chain one, single crochet into the same stitch could be even a double crochet, chain one, double crochet into the same stitch or it could be double crochet, chain two, double crochet into the same stitch. It depends on the designer and the pattern that you're working on. So don't assume that it's standard. So let's move along to color coding with the alphabet. Colors in a project are assigned a letter. So usually the main color of the project that is mostly used could be used as MC which is short for main color. The rest of the colors are in alphabetical starting with A going all the way through Z until all the colors are listed. In some patterns the main color could also be listed as A and so you may not see MC as listed. It depends on the designer. So let's take a look at the instruction and let's determine what the color is being asked. So let's take a look at the instruction. It says second round with F. Now with F is the actual color so we have to go back to the color code of the pattern and determine what F is. So that means that we're gonna use that color to continue down this set of instruction and at the end of this instruction we are going to break F off. It could also say fasten off and I'll explain the differences later on in today's tutorial. So this instruction if there is no color code assignment right in the instruction so if we moved on to the third round and there's no colors assigned to it it means that the color is carrying on and on and on until there's instructions of telling you to change your color. So you always just keep assuming that it's the same color unless the designer tells you otherwise. So let's move along to sizing differences in a pattern. When a pattern is written there could be multiple sizes available. Could be doing a hat or clothing. The instructions for the sizes are provided in one write up instead of all of the writing of the different patterns that are possible. So it just makes it a lot easier to be able to follow as to being able to find the information. So if you find a hat in a certain size do you want the other sizes? Instead of having to look for it everything has been provided on the one set of instructions if multiple sizes are given. Usually the designers can dictate the color coding on the pattern itself or just use simple instructions by using brackets to separate the sizes for you. I'll explain further. So let's take a look at this example and we have small, medium, large and extra large and you'll notice that small is outside of the bracket and the inside the brackets are medium all the way through extra large. There could be all the way to five extra large depending on the pattern. So this indicates to me that there's four different sizes being instructed on this pattern. So let's just take a look at an example. So it says chain three, five, seven or nine. You will choose the number that matches the size that you're crocheting. So you're not crocheting all of this chain three, five, five, seven or nine. You're just choosing the one you want to play with. So in this case three is small, five is medium, seven is large and nine is extra large. Any time in the instructions where there's a difference of stitch counts based on sizing the instructions will appear like this with the differences of counts. It can also appear in the instructions for giving measurements as sizes. So it says continue four inches, five inches, six and seven. Again you will choose the number that matches the size. Again meaning small, medium, large or extra large. 
Just as a note, these sizes that I'm showing you here change versus the pattern. So there could be extra small all the way to five extra large. So there could be more digits or there could be less. You have to refer to the pattern for the sizes that they're writing for in the pattern. As a cautionary tip, I would highlight the specific size number with all of the instructions that have a difference. For example, if I was crocheting the medium size in the pattern, I would highlight the medium size number in each of the instructions so that I don't accidentally pick the wrong number by mistake. It's easy to pick the wrong number if you're distracted or not paying full attention. So just go out through the pattern and highlight all the numbers that you're intending on playing with. In instructions such as this, it's not uncommon for rows or rounds not to have any specific sizes to instructions. If there is no difference between the sizes at that specific point in the project, all of the sizes can be done the same way and the instruction on what you're going to uh, do will not have the breakdown of information for the sizes. So if you come along and there is no brackets and it says to give you a set of instructions, for example chain one, one double crochet in each stitch across and then turn, that means that all of them at that particular point in the pattern are the same instruction and you don't have to worry about the sizing at all. In instructions such as this, it's not uncommon to have rows or rounds to not have any specific instructions for sizing. So if there's no difference between the sizes at that point of the project and all the sizes can be done the exact same way that you're working on at that moment, you will not have a breakdown of instructions with the sizes. So for example, chain one, one double crochet in each stitch across and then turn. So all of them at that particular point has that instruction so you will not see a breakdown of brackets at that particular point. So for examples such as this, you will need to watch the pattern for instructions where a row or round is defined specifically. For example, the dipped tip crochet hat at round number six it is all the same for everybody but in round number seven it deviates depending on what size that you're working on. So you have to go to the set of instructions that is matching the size that you're working on and then move on to the next section after you get that done. So you get to ignore any of the set of instructions that is unrelated to the size and when doing this, this eliminates whole sections out of a pattern that you may not realize uh, you have to do and therefore you might realize that the pattern is not as big as you expect it to because there are multiple sizes being shared within one pattern. So let's move along to doing repeats and brackets. Many new crocheters get hung up on the repeating of patterns. So if you're like me, you may get stuck at this point when you're learning how to read patterns for the very first time. Don't feel that special, it's just something that we all go through. So even for me eight years in, I'm still getting tripped up on the repeating of instructions and it's just a natural thing. So there are five things to watch out for when it comes to doing the repeats and they are the asterisks, the round brackets, the square brackets, instructions to say repeat rounds and recurring steps in order for you to follow through. So let's move along to asterisks first. When the asterisk is used, it's the starting point of a repeat of instruction. So it's the most commonly used in the pattern. So let's take a look at the instruction here. You started off with chain two and then have an asterisk before the two half double crochet. You will complete everything after the asterisk and then the instruction says repeat the asterisk around. So you continually repeat what is after the asterisk over and over and over to the end and at the end of the round you join with the slip stitch to the first half double crochet that you started with. So remember that the asterisk is the starting point of a repeat. For rounded brackets, rounded brackets means that a set of instructions are grouped together. In this example, one double crochet, chain one, two double crochet are in the same space as the last slip stitch. To keep the pattern easier to read, it's showing you that they belong together as they went into the same space. So they're grouped together. So further on in the instructions, you'll see it again is one single crochet in the next chain three space, chain three twice. The word twice is after the last bracket and that means that you will have to do that set of instruction inside the bracket twice. Don't mistake that for doing that pattern once and then repeating it two more times. It's just doing that set of instruction inside the bracket twice only. So let's move on to doing the square brackets. So the square brackets only appear when there is more groupings involved and working together when a round bracket is already in place. So if for example we have the square bracket, round bracket, one double crochet, chain one, four times and then you have one double crochet all in the next single crochet and then it's a dash shell is made. We have multiple things going on in this statement. Let me explain. So we see that one double crochet chain one four times is a repeat. So we know this has to be done four times and because it's already in the rounded brackets we have to complete that set of instruction first of repeating four times before going ahead and doing the final one double crochet. 
So the square bracket is defining the group as a shell. So the next time you see in the instructions the word shell, everything inside the square brackets is the definition of what that shell is. So if you see in round number six, it states shell into the next stitch. Well shell is defined in round number two and then uh, you just have to go back and look at it if you don't remember what exactly what you did and get the instructions for what that shell is and that was indicated in the square brackets. So you just have to look at these brackets and how they're defining each other and in this case you see that how they're working together in unison. So repeating rows and rounds and at times certain instructions like afghans have a repeating number of set of rows and sometimes it has instructions that tell you to go look at certain rows to in order to repeat. So for example you can see it in multiple ways. So here you see row 13 is the same as row number 3 and row 14 is the same as row number 2. So instead of rewriting the same instruction the designer is telling you to go and look at the same instruction for what you've already done and then come right back to where you are in the pattern. So don't go back in behind back to number 2 and start all those instructions all over again. The, that is just telling you to do row number 13 as the third row and row number 14 as the second. So this is kind of a neat idea and once you get that done then you can continue to move forward in your pattern. So don't go backward and start back all over again. Just grab the same instruction and do as it states for those particular rows. Repeating sections of a pattern. So it has here repeat rounds number two all the way to five twice. So you can see second to fifth twice. So it simply means that you need to go back and redo the instructions from rounds number two, three, four and five and then once done you do it again for a second time because it's indicating twice. So this is a continuation in the pattern and so you're doing as instructed in order to continue to build onto your project. So just have to go back and repeat the rounds or rows that it indicates. Sometimes they tell you to do repeat without actually telling you the row counts or the round counts in order for you to do so. So in some patterns repeating counts in specific rows or rounds are not given. In the instruction for the mermaid tail snuggle sack there are uh, two rows that we have where we have to watch our stitch counts as we reduce stitches. So it doesn't tell you what the stitch uh, rows are but you have to watch your stitch counts in order to make the reduction on your own. This is common and let me explain more. So at the beginning of the extraction we have 36 half double crochet but as we complete row number 2 and 3 we eliminated out some stitches and we're leaving out 3 stitches unworked in row number 2 and then crocheting as normal for row number 3. So they're instructing us to repeat row number 2 and 3 over and over again and each time we do row number 2 we're eliminating out 3 stitches all over again. So you have to continue to repeat rows number 2 and 3 until there's 21 stitches left before moving on in the pattern. So instead of telling you to repeat rows number 2 and 3 a set number of times you as a crocheter need to count your reduction of stitches as you go and when you get to 21 you then can move on in the pattern to the next instruction. This is quite common in patterns and it's something you can typically see. So let's move along to key tips in reading a pattern. So what I would suggest is glance the pattern as a whole and don't panic because you don't do all the instructions at once you work everything step by step. So you can't get to the final look without completing all the steps in between so take it step by step and take it slowly. The thing that you're going to most likely notice first is the hook size and the yarn requirement and it's usually other than the pitcher that is going to be the determination whether you're going to continue the pattern or not. Usually in a pattern the hook size is generally one hook size in a pattern but there are things for clothing where you can actually use more than one size hook in order to uh, obtain the idea that you want. So ribbing at the bottom of a sweater may have a smaller hook size. So the pattern could indicate to you what sizes those hooks are but in the actual instruction line it says with smaller hook chain 7. So you look to the instruction and determine which is the smaller hook by looking at the pattern or you could see just use the larger hook chain 15 and again looking at the pattern and determining what is the large and what is the small. So they don't ever give you the size of it they just tell you with whether it's smaller or larger in the pattern. So that's something that you can commonly see especially within clothing. So the gauge is something that is also in the pattern and professional patterns have the gauge that is listed. Each of us have our own technique and holding our own yarn and hook. So the tension difference between you having a great day and a stressful day can also appear in your crochet project. So due to you not being able to see or hold the actual project in your hand the designers have given you the stitch counts that were in a 4 by 4 inch swatch and this will allow you to match the pattern exactly to their design without actually having to hold their project. 
So in this case it says 13 single crochets in 14 rows equals a 4 by 4 inch swatch. So it says 4 inches but it's assumed 4 by 4. So that's what you need to do. So this is telling you that you should be able to crochet 13 single crochets in a row and then do 14 rows and then you should end up with a 4 by 4 inch swatch. So to do this swatch because it's single crochet you will just need to chain 14 and single crochet second chain from the hook and then one single crochet in each stitch across and then turn. Then in row two just chain one and one single crochet in each stitch and turn. So you'll completely do row number two over and over to the get till you get to the prescribed rows in the swatch. Then stop and measure. Don't cut your yarn just make some decisions and then pull out the yarn to actually use on your real project. So what does the sizing mean of the gauge? So if your swatch is smaller than the 4 by 4 inches and you follow the instructions as is, it means that you're a tight crocheter in comparison to the original pattern that you're gonna be doing. So you'll end up with a smaller size project than what the pattern is actually telling you. So you'll need to increase your hook size and again retry another swatch. Maybe try going up a couple sizes on your crochet hook and then you can figure that out on your own. So if your gauge swatch is really close to the 4 by 4 you can just know that your project will be pretty close to the same size and then you can continue as is. Again pull out your work and then just restart your actual project. Now if your gauge is bigger than the 4 by 4 it means that you're a loose crochet and in terms of the specific pattern. So you need to reduce down your hook size and try again and maybe try going down a couple sizes. Gauging matters the most when it comes to things that are being worn and that need to fit. So people, people usually skip the gauging for afghans and scarves because it's really not that, that, that big of a deal. But when it comes to actual clothing if you want to make the right size that's in the pattern you're going to want to gauge first. So let's begin starting your pattern and let's just take it really slowly just to look at what set of instruction and just to make sure that you're getting the idea here. So let's uh, just look for any commas, periods, brackets and repeating and we're going to take a look at this first round. So here we go. So first round chain two does not count as a stitch here and throughout. One double crochet in each chain round. Join with a slip stitch to the first double crochet and then it says 72 double crochet. So this instruction is telling you that the chain two at the beginning of the round it doesn't count as a stitch. It's just told you that. So it's also telling you that every time that you see that instruction throughout this pattern that you will never count that as a stitch. So the next time it states chain two at the beginning of the instructions you don't count that as a stitch. So that is giving you the indication and that set of instruction will never appear again for you later on in the pattern. So if you take a look at the second round it says chain two and then has the instructions. So chain two never counts as a stitch. It already just indicated that in round number one. So you just want to be very mindful of that. So if you look back then to round number one it has 72 double crochet at the end of the line. That's not telling you to double crochet 72 times. That's telling you the stitch count at the end of that round. So sometimes in patterns the designers provide that information for you. So you can do a double count in order to check to see if you're on track or not. So so it's a piece of the information that just to make sure that you get your counts right and it's really quite handy to have. So things that we need to watch for is when it's an actual instruction and when it's a referral to a location. So in instructions you may see things like chain two and then chain hyphen two. They are not the same thing. So if I tell you to put five double crochets into the next stitch you will put five double crochets into the next stitch. That is an instruction. However if I tell you to put five double crochets into the next chain two and that has a hyphen in it in the next chain two space that's a difference of what it is. So the hyphen of chain two has a positioning reference. So it's telling you a location. It's not telling you to chain two. So I'm not telling you to crochet five or double crochet five and then chain two. I'm telling you that you need to put your five double crochets in the chain two space. So it's referring to something that already exists in your pattern. So in many instructions you could see join with the slip stitch. So the top of the beginning chain three with a hyphen and so it's telling you to slip stitch in the existing beginning chain three that's already there. So it's specific when it has a hyphen in it that it's a location that you need to target for on your, on your project. So let's move along to fastening on and off when it comes to these sections. So in crochet terms there are short forms used for this and it's usually FO for fasten on or off and you can tell by reading the pattern if you're fastening on and off. So you can substitute the O for either on or off that depends on your project. You also see the word break and fasten off when yarn colors are used within the project. There is a technical difference between these two and I'll explain that to you in just a second. 
When the word break is used it doesn't mean to abruptly cut your yarn. It means that you still have to change your yarn methodically and being able to hide in your tail ends. It means that the project is midway through a dedicated section and is continuing with a different color. So it means that the section is not complete. So whether you're partially way through an arm sleeve or an afghan where the project is not complete the word break is used. So think break that you're midway through a section or project. Now the word fastening off is something else. The words fasten off are used when a section is completed. So for example you have finished the section of the arm sleeve completely and you're now ready to sew it onto something else. So you're completely done and so it will say fasten off at the end of that. So you're completely done that section. So if you're done your afghan at that moment as well it can be fastening off. So whenever something is completely done or a section is completely done then the term fastening off will be done. But just remember if you're partially way through a set of instructions it will have the word break instead. So let's move along to behind the scenes of pattern writing. So in North America there's an organization called the Craft Yarn Council of America. Reputable organizations such as designers, industry professionals and even yarn companies either belong or adhere to the standards of what this organization dictates for the yarn arts. They come up with standards of abbreviations, packaging for ball bands and much more to be used. They also have correct symbols within diagrams. They have free resources for crocheters and designers to be able to learn to be able to read and write patterns. So for new designers this is a great starting spot. Since the conception of this organization most of the new designs in the past several years follow the same structure. However there could be slight differences in presentation from one company to another. The difference is in the writing skills itself but also the way that it's written is usually pretty standard. So this allows us crocheters to go into the yarn stores, pick up the balls of yarn that we need, pick up patterns, we can find patterns online and follow everything with these because there is a standard of language that is used within crochet. More often than not we see mistakes and patterns when it comes to the online world. And we have to consider that us crocheters we demand more free patterns and more and more and more. And the bigger companies want to adhere to giving us more. But in the process that sometimes they rush the, the pattern development, the trials of testing, the photographic samples, the original pattern writing, the graphics and much more that we get as a consumer. So sometimes it takes between three months to one year before the customer actually sees what has been designed. So in the mad rush to get the customers exactly what they want and to keep up with the demands sometimes things get rushed through and sometimes mistakes do happen. So a designer is responsible for doing hundreds of new designs but it, they have to follow each one of the designs going through the complete process of what I've just said. So in the process if they have made a mistake as a result of being pressured applied by the consumers like you and I of wanting more and more and more mistakes can usually happen. So usually companies that are really quite uh, reputable they are good to review, rewrite and fix any mistakes that are found. And sometimes it's very easy to fault the designer for that but it's us the consumer that want more and more and they're trying to make sure that they give us more and more and more but sometimes have to rush the process in order to make that happen. So I guess that's it for today. That's my lesson. That's everything that you need to know kind of in a nutshell. There's always things to learn with crochet whether it's a new stitch or learning how to read patterns. You're always going to learn something new. That's why I love crochet. So if you think your friends would be interested in this video feel free to refer them to my instruction video. And until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of Yarn Inspirations as well as the crochet crowd.com. We'll see you again real soon.